greet you all this morning in Jesus' precious name. Uh, it's a blessing to be here with you. Uh, always appreciated that song, Faith is the Victory that Overcomes the World. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy to us, Lord. We just ask your blessing upon this time together. Lord, we ask your blessing on, Lord, our lives. And Lord, help us to be faithful to you, Lord. We just ask that you'd fill us with your spirit. Help us have understanding and wisdom, Father. Lord, we do ask you for that. Wisdom, Father, comes from above. Help us be faithful to carry it out in our lives. Lord, open our hearts to your word. Thank, us. Thank you again for your goodness. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, I want to open our Bibles first to Proverbs 14. I'm going to read one verse here, a part of a verse, and then we're going to turn to Numbers. This Proverbs 14, verse 10 says, If the heart of man is controlled by feelings, his soul is sorrowful. But when he rejoices, it is not mingled with arrogance. I just want to think about that one. The part, first part of that verse, If the heart of man is controlled by feelings, his soul is sorrowful. sorrowful. And I want to... Just keep that thought in mind as we go through here. Uh, one of the things we that are that's very prominent today is our emotions and feelings, and uh, they seem to control. Well, they do. They will do control our actions if we allow them. But it, it's very noticeable today. A lot of uh, a lot of people are living just on their emotions. You know, you see that in on the you know, the computer and things like that. People that are on there and the 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 uh, popular ideas that are going on and today are the the political correct thoughts. They're just what's guiding all of those things are people who are allowing their emotions to control them to to cause fear and they're being they're controlled by that so you know you say one thing one day and because it upsets someone or because it it offends them they react against that well the next day you could say the exact opposite thing to that and they get offended the same way because their emotions, just the, the roller coaster of emotions, is controlling their lives. And that it's exactly what the Bible says. That if we allow that to happen, I mean, we're controlled by that fear. And I want to open our Bibles to, to Numbers, chapter 21 now. I want to kind of start with that just uh, as a as a thought I mean we see it so prominent and just try to help ourselves not to be caught up in that and not let our emotions control us whether they're emotions of fear or emotions of anger whenever our emotions take over we're we're out of order and that's whenever we're out of order someone else can control us and take over and that's what we want to avoid what the the, the world we live in is a is a world that's found freedom and in that freedom they found prosperity and in that prosperity they became lazy and in that laziness they go back to chains and bondage and the, the, the whole idea of this, of 
being afraid or controlled in our emotions brings us back to bondage. And we're just in that cycle of life, that cycle of the world. It's just gone through it over and over, different societies over and over again, just from bondage to freedom and then freedom to prosperity and prosperity to, to laziness or plenty. And then from that, it turns back into bondage again. And, and we're in that time of bondage and where our emotions control us. We're just, that we become under bondage for that. In uh, Numbers 21, this is the account in, of uh, the uh, children of Israel and Moses had led them into the desert from their bondage they went into the desert and just that very thought you know they spent 40 years in the desert and you know and that right there is a picture when we think of being delivered from something we just think of that being put out of our life or put away from us but that's not the way reality is that's not the way life is you know, we're, we're looking for a life where we're just happy all the time and everything's perfect. But the reality is, is life is full of struggles. Life is full of pain and suffering. And those things are all around us and we're all touched by them. We're all, we're, they affect us all. And our thought or idea of getting away or getting past those things is to get rid of those things. But we're going to read here. I just, we'll just start reading and go for there. Then they departed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea. And they went around the land of Edom and the people became discouraged on the way. Okay. God was leading his people. God was leading them. They had been delivered from bondage. Now they're out in the desert and it tells they departed from Mount Hor by the way of the sea and they went around the land of Edom and the people became discouraged. Right here is the first step. Becoming discouraged. They had been delivered. They'd been set free. The freedom was right in front of them. You know, that's the, that's the glorious thing about freedom. You know, I, I just thought about the pioneers. You know, they had their places in the, in the city, you know, whatever. They had their places in civilized land. And they just felt bondage in that. And... They left all that. You know, we talk about the pioneers whenever they, they, the things that they faced, just coming out, going, or in this case, coming out west. You know, they, came, they left the eastern civilized and just came out west. And they had nothing but the blue sky and land in front of them. And they were free. They were happy and free. They left all of the comforts and they chose that path because there was, there was something about just that idea of freedom. Unwilling uh, to face unimaginable struggles and troubles and problems for that freedom. And this was in a physical sense. Here the children of Israel had been delivered from Egypt and all its bondage. And they were out in the middle of a desert. And instead of breathing the fresh air of freedom, they started looking at their circumstances and became discouraged. And they became discouraged on the way. So the people spoke against God and against Moses he said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us in the desert? They began to grumble and complain. They, they're 
For there was no bread nor water, and our soul is weary of this worthless bread. This was the manna that God had been given. They, they were weary of they were weary of what they had, complaining to God about everything, blaming God for putting them out into this freedom. And what I want to bring out right here is that that being delivered from freedom, you know, in the one place it talks about remembering the leeks and the garlic that was back there in their bondage and how they longed for that. And isn't that the way it is when we get discouraged or we allow our emotions or we allow things to, to uh, distract us from what's real and the freedom. And we begin to long for bondage again. I've, I've seen people in, in, in my life I've, I've, that were so fearful or so discouraged or so afraid of some one thing happening that they went and ran right into the very thing they were afraid of and the very thing they hated. They felt a comfort in just going ahead and plunging into whatever danger or whatever thing they were afraid of and they would just plunge themselves into it. I've seen it happen a lot. You know, the, whenever you people that are afraid of heights I kind of feel this I know kind of feel what they you get up so high and you look out and there's just something inside of you that just don't want to get too close to the edge not because you're afraid you'll fall off but because you'll just throw jump yourself jump off that's the fear and for why why would you even think of something like that or why would you even be worried about that but but you get up so high and the fear is not the beautiful scenery or anything about it. It's the fear that you're just going to run over the edge and jump off. And that's what, that's what we do. Because this is what emotions do to us and our being driven by them does to us. Not acting on faith. And that song we sang, Faith is the Victory. And that's what I want to talk about here just a little bit. They complained. They got discouraged. They began to complain. For there is no bread and water, and our soul is weary of this worthless bread. And then it said, So the Lord sent venomous snakes, serpents, among the people. You know, They had fears, they had hunger, they had something, and when they complained about it, look what the Lord did. He gave them serpents to contend with. He gave them something to really have to worry about. And he sent venomous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the children of Israel died. You know, they were worried about dying because they were starving to death. And they belly ached about it and they complained. And the Lord said, here's something that will really kill you. You know, because a lot of times the things that we worry about and the things that we're so concerned with, they're not the issue at all at hand. And so the Lord gave them something really to worry about. And then it says, Then the people came to Moses and were saying, We sinned, for we spoke against the Lord and against you. Therefore pray to the Lord and let him take away the serpents from us. Here the people found out, realized what they were doing. And it, it woke them up. And they went to Moses and they apologized to him and to the Lord for how they were acting and said, Now, Lord, take those serpents away from us. And that's what I was talking about earlier, you know. This is where the world, we, 
this is how we look at our problems. You know, when we find something that we don't like, some thing that we have to live with, some problem, some circumstance, what we do is we go to the Lord and we pray and we say, Lord, take this away from us. Take this away from us. And there's a lot of people that hate God today because they've been told that God will just hear their prayer. And so they ask for God to take away something, some pain, some suffering, and he doesn't do it. And so they get mad at God because he doesn't just fix their problems like he was some magic genie or some kind of magician. And so they hate God. They get mad at him because he didn't just fix all their little problems. Here, these people had serpents coming at them and they were dying because they were being bitten by them. And they asked God to take them away. So Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said to Moses, make a serpent for yourself and put it on a signal pole and it shall be if a serpent should bite someone when the one bitten looks at it, he shall live. <coughs> Notice that God did not take away the serpents. He didn't take the serpents away. He gave them a remedy to deal with even being bitten by a serpent. He gave them a remedy to live with the serpents. You know, we want our serpents or whatever our problems are just to be taken away. And we ask God to take them away. And we get discouraged and depressed because he hasn't taken them away and he hasn't fixed our problems. God provides a way for us to live with our problems. And to live through our problems. That's how we become strong. That's how we become better people. That's how we overcome this world. You see, a majority of people in Christianity are looking for God just to take away their problems because, well, He healed the sick, He fixed people's problems. In the New Testament, that's what Jesus did. He, he did a lot of that. And he did. But for us to have faith and to have strong, a strong character, a better person, something that God is trying to make us, is not, he doesn't just take our problems away. They were in the desert here for 40 years. The purpose of the desert wasn't for anything more than to make these people better whenever they came out the other side to, so that they could preserve the seed of the Christ that was coming, that was promised through them. And that's the same way it is with us. God's, this life that he's given us is a journey. It's a way, it's a path. We want a magic quick fix and everything's just perfect. You know, that's the, that, I think that's the, one of the misconceptions of Christianity that if we become a Christian, God will just fix our problems and we'll be good. And if something does bad happen, we just pray and, then he'll take that away and he'll fix that. But that's not who God is. God is actually trying to make you a better person. You know, if we just, we see it in children, if we just give our children everything they need or if we just do everything for them and what happens? I was just talking to a lady yesterday and she was, he was talking about her son. And he's just 
discouraged all the time. What's life worth? What's life worth living for? There's nothing. In, and I said, you know, there's a lot of that in the world. A whole bunch of it in the world. These young people, they, you know, the, it's awful. And they're discouraged and depressed. And I said, well, one of the big problems is, 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 is mother, they, they've never had to work a day in their life just to eat. They've never had to take care of themselves. There's no self-worth. There's no self-ability. Because every time they want something, all they got to do is ask mom or ask the government or ask somebody and somebody will come along and do it for them. There was no spirit like the pioneers had where I'm going to leave everything and I want all I want is an opportunity to be able to do it myself and to take care of myself. But today, everything's taking care of us, for us. And what that does to our self-worth is makes, makes us look like everything in this world is, what's the use? It's worthless. And I just, I told that lady, I said, these, these young people today, they grow up and they never have to work. They never have any responsibilities. Everything's just handed to them. Why would they think anything was good? And she said, just kind of stepped back and said, that's exactly what I do to my son. I've got to, that's, that's exactly, every time he wants something to eat, I just stop everything and go get him whatever he wants to eat. I just wait on him hand and foot. That's not the way we make someone, we make someone strong, or we make some better or self-reliant. That's the way we fall into bondage. And that's what God knows. And that's why He doesn't just give us every little thing we want. That's why He don't take away the problems that we live with every day. That's why you know, the things that are afflict us or cause us pain or cause us trouble or the things that we have to live with, whatever they are, whether it's how our mind operates or, or the circumstances that have been thrown upon us. And all we look at is the problem. Instead of looking to God's solution to get through the problem, and to be strengthened and to get strength and grow through that problem. He created, you know, what was it that was biting him? You know, I imagine these people were scared to death of snakes or serpents because they were coming into the camp and getting bitten and people were dying. Can you imagine the fear of serpents in the camp? At that time, you know, if there was some, we just saw it. Somebody, you know, we just came through a time where people were scared to death of a virus. Willing to give up all kinds of freedoms because of a virus. The fear that controlled because people yielded to their emotions on this fear and they came into bondage. Well, here we've got serpents that are all around us. And people are scared to death of the serpent. What did God do? He made an image of a serpent and put it on a pole. And then what did He tell the people to do to how to find comfort from the snake bite or the serpent bite? Look at the serpent. Look at the very thing that you're afraid of. And instead of just jumping into the pile of snakes and letting them bite you, look at your problems. Face your fears. Face your problems. And then live with them. And keep on going. You know, we live in... We live in... 
irrational minds. We have them. Irrational minds if we let them. And we'll, like one instance, you know, just jumping off because you're afraid. I don't know what you're afraid of. You're afraid of, you get, up, get afraid and so you just jump instead of just, that's an irrational idea. We live in a world full of that. We live with that ourselves. That's who we are. The way to conquer our fears is to look at them, face them. Just look at them. And then overcome them. We want them all taken away. We want, we want them gone. We want them to leave us. But God wants us to trust Him to lead us through these things. You know, everything in life that we do begins with the next step we take. You know, we look at a, a long, long journey and we think and we get discouraged and we get depressed about how hard it will be to live this way. And God just says, get up and take the next step. I remember that was one of the most difficult things that when my family left, I wanted to die. I didn't want to live this way. I didn't want to live this way. And it was the hardest thing for me just to come to terms with this is the way God wants me to live right now. This is in God's hands. And I had to learn to get up each day and say, all I have to do is follow. All I have to do is take the next step and just make it one more day. All I have to do is one foot in front of the other. You know, I saw there was a man that his wife had left him and he had lived 30 years by himself. And, you know, everybody kind of lifted him up and was proud of him and how good he was doing. And it was a blessing. But I looked at him and I thought, 30 years? I don't want to live like this for 30 years. It was hard. And then I just had to go back to living one minute at a time. Just go through this. That's all I have to do. Now I look back and it's been almost 30 years. And it's just a way of life now. And I've made it 30 years. Now there's other things you deal with. And all I have to do is take one step at a time. You see, the remedy for courage, the remedy for faith, is turning around and looking at the very thing that's going to kill you. The very thing that you're afraid of. You see, it's not the sissies. It's not the people that are looking for comfort. It's not the people that are looking for handouts and for everything given to them, the kingdom of heaven. That's not what it's for. The kingdom of heaven is a journey that's right through the middle of the desert and it has snakes and it has dry places and it has little food sometimes. That's the straight and narrow path that leads to life. When we can make those things that we're afraid of our friend, you know, I read a book a long time ago that 
It's, it's called The Richest Man in Babylon was the name of the book. And this young man went and sought the advice of the richest man in Babylon. And one of the first ideas of advice he gave this young man was make work your friend instead of your enemy. And it transformed this young man's life. The thing that you hate, if you will see that as a prod to make you go forward and to make you a better person instead of your enemy. You know, we, people look for happiness and they think happiness is when all their problems are gone. But that's not where it's found. True joy and true happiness is found whenever you've made the thing that you fear and the thing that you hate, your enemy and your guide. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. The cross was the most feared emblem there is in those times. And Jesus said, make that your friend, carry it. And that's the way to the kingdom of heaven. Make your enemy, make your fear your friend, and you'll go a long ways to just leaping past what you never thought you would ever be able to do. And Lord, add his blessings. You don't have anything you'd like to share? All right. Well, Lord willing, we'll meet back here at six o'clock and have a fellowship meal and communion. God bless y'all. Depart in peace.